Hi everyone, welcome back to Kentucky State University's Aquaculture Research Center. My name is Cole Delighton. I'm a graduate research assistant in the genetics laboratory led by Dr. Noel Novello. At Kentucky State University, one of our current goals is to increase the productivity traits of tilapia and to increase the aquaculture potential of these species in the U.S. Tilapia is one of the dominant seafood species consumed in the U.S. and on a global stage. The name tilapia refers to several species of cultivated cichlids. Nile tilapia is the most commonly cultivated tilapia species and is native to the north central portions of Africa and the Jordan River Valley in the Middle East. Nile tilapia specifically have an aptitude for domestication and thrive in a wide range of culture environments. Commercial production of tilapia is present in over 70 countries. The large majority of tilapia products available to U.S. consumers are imported, just like other species of fish. Tilapia sometimes unfairly receive a poor reputation. In this video, we are going to overview tilapia production and research done at Kentucky State University. Hopefully by the end of this video, you know a little bit more about tilapia aquaculture. Let's get started. Our tilapia production starts right here with our spawning tanks. In these spawning tanks you can see substrate. The substrate in the tanks provides extra cover and security for the males and females. There are two breeding colonies located in this spawning tank. Each breeding colony consists of one male and three females. The lights located on these tanks help to increase and intensify the photo period on a daily basis. We have the lights set to 18 hours of light and 6 hours of darkness. There are heaters in each tank as well to maintain a water temperature of around 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Nile tilapia are a mouth brooding species. So when we are collecting eggs from the females, we have to gather the females into fine screen hoppas and pry open the buccal cavities to check for eggs. We take the eggs and the fry out of these tanks and move them to the next step, which is our hatchery. This technique of spawning tilapia is referred to as semi-natural or semi-artificial because the fish are naturally spawning with each other but in a controlled environment. Each female will provide about 600 eggs at every collection cycle and females can provide eggs about every 21 days or three weeks. Once we collect the eggs from the females in our spawning systems, they take about five to 10 days to hatch and to fry. Once the fry hatch and begin feeding, it's about a 30 day period for us to grow those fry to 0.5 grams. If you'd like more inf information about our hatchery system, follow the link at the end of the video. This here is our nursery rearing system. So after the fingerlings are a half gram in the hatchery, we'll move them over to the nursery system. Each of these tanks are 110 gallon and we typically stock them with 300 fish. This is an important part of the fingerling rearing process because these fish will stay in these systems till they're about 15 grams. And this typically takes 50 days or more. Once the fingerlings reach 15 grams, we can stock them into our outdoor systems or our larger indoor systems. This here is one of our production recirculating aquaculture systems. As you can see here, these tanks are 250 gallons. There's 12 of them located in this system, and we'll stock these tanks anywhere between 50 and 100 fish. All the water from our 12 culture tanks flows into our 1,000 gallon sump. There's a two-step filtration process that occurs here. The first of which is the mechanical filter that pulls water from the sump and captures the solids. The second step is the 350 gallon biofilter. The latest research done in this 12 tank system evaluated three strains of Nile tilapia produced by two methods of sex control. In this research we evaluated growth, sex proportion, and several productivity traits, as well as marketability at the end of the trial. 
An important part of tilapia aquaculture is feeding the fish. Here at Kentucky State University, the adult tilapia, larval tilapia, fry tilapia, we feed to satiation, which is based on observation of appetite and recommended feeding guidelines. Our, a typical meal session will last about 30 minutes. We also have these large outdoor tanks that we refer to as microcosms. And these outdoor tanks we use to produce tilapia uh, to food size and we also use them as spawning tanks similar to the indoor tanks we looked at earlier. However, the spawning strategy changes as we just take the fingerlings out of here instead of the adult broodstock. You'll notice on these outdoor tanks that they don't have the same biofiltration or mechanical filtration. That's because these microcosms are flow through systems. So as we introduce nutrients, the water continues to replenish and exchange itself. Outdoor production of tilapia is limited in many states. Optimal temperatures for tilapia growth is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So even at Kentucky State University, we have between three to four months to grow these fish during the summer. Tilapia have a low cold tolerance. So once the temperature drops below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the fish growth is reduced. The low cold tolerance of tilapia helps to decrease the invasive potential of tilapia species in many states. Pond aquaculture is the third method of tilapia production here at Kentucky State University. Similar to the outdoor tanks that we looked at, temperature is also a limiting factor in tilapia production at Kentucky State University in the ponds. Compared to the other two systems that we looked at, the outdoor tanks and the indoor tanks, the stocking density of tilapia in these ponds is less per cubic meter than the other two systems. Pond production can vary depending on the pond structure. Our research ponds at Kentucky State University are straight walled and are about four feet deep. All our ponds range in size from a 10th acre to a 20th acre. The growing intensification of Nile tilapia globally has led to several selective breeding programs with the aim of improving fish growth. Here at Kentucky State University, we obtain different strains of Nile tilapia and evaluate the growth and productivity traits such as feed conversion ratio, survival, and coloration. Tilapia are notorious for early maturation and asynchronous spawning, which can lead to a high degree of unwanted reproduction and offspring recruitment. Sexual size dimorphism greatly favors males as Nile tilapia are a mouth brooding species. This means that the female will carry the fertilized eggs in her buccal cavity and is unable to feed during this period. Male Nile tilapia grow larger faster, so several methods of sex control have been developed to promote all male populations. Cultivating all male tilapia has been shown to improve market efficiency. There are several different methods of sex control, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. Some examples include hormonal sex reversal using 17-alpha methyl testosterone, YY male technology, manual hand separation, thermal shock treatment, and interspecific hybridizations. We have evaluated several of these methods at KSU. The tilapia we currently have on hand represent five variations of color, from dark wild type coloration to blonde, white, light red, and a blotched red. So why grow tilapia? Well, tilapia are a mild tasting fish that grow to market size remarkably faster than other food fish. Tilapia can be marketed as filet products, whole fish, and in live fish markets. You don't need a complicated system to grow tilapia. There are many different DIY systems you can find online to grow these fish using IBC totes or backyard aquaponics. Aquaculture is the fastest growing sector of agriculture and fish production will continually be more important as the human population demands more protein. So if you're ever contemplating aquaculture or growing a few fish in your backyard, consider tilapia. Thanks for watching this video and keep an eye out for more videos from Kentucky State University's Aquaculture Research Center.